Okay, so for the demo, we will uh, provide three regions you can test out. Um, I also have cheated myself another region, but we will ignore that by now. Um, when you select a region, we currently, for the demo, only have the city, city or postal code available to choose from and not the coordinates or the custom maps which we um, want to offer for your Alexis. So let's dive into it and select a city. For the demo, we ju offer a city in Germany. It's Lichtenau. And let's load into it. Um, so when you start loading into a city, you always get some information about the region. Like what is the temperature, the sunshine, the rain probability, what are average values for the fields. And also how many fields are even um, available. And with our thousand fields here, we can start the game. This is more than enough to have a good session. Um, we're using OpenStreetMap for the fields. So there's we're kind of dependent on OpenStreetMap how many fields there are available for us. Um, if you want to have a rough estimate where you can already play, it's you can look at the OpenStreetMap land use data. That's the data we use. So I placed my farm in this beautiful region and we are welcomed with this little text. Looks like a great spot for your farm. This is your central hub for all your farm buildings and vehicles. Design your favorite farm layout and utilize the extensive selection of vehicles to maximize your agriculture potential. Go to your farm by clicking on the farm building or the farm button at the bottom of the screen. And here's an um, vital information for you. This demo, in this demo, you can play for 15 years. Um, <laughs> so we uh, can't play forever in this demo, but only for 15 years. But 15 years are still quite a lot of time. So you can figure out what you want to do. Yeah. So we can either click on a house or on the button. I love clicking the button. So I'm placing roads. Um, because we need roads to place objects beside it. Also, it looks weird if you don't place roads. So I'm gonna place three parting lots. And I wanna place everything which I need for harvesting um, carrots. Because it's our plan, harvesting carrots. Um, for the tutorial, at least. Later on, we can also harvest all the other stuff, but we start with carrots. So we need a small tractor. We have um, a variety of tractors. For the demo, we only have three tractors available, um, but we start with a small one because it's not as expensive as other tractors. Um, as you see on the left, on the um, description, you can see how much it costs. It's 25,000. Uh, per small tractor and you have like a small description of every um, tractor we have or tool um, so this one I placed is a small tractor to pull the basic implements it has it has a low horsepower um, so it can only um, pull the small implements we have and we also have always the size so you know uh, how much space it takes up on your parking lots and the HP power so you know which implements it can pull Right, um, what else do we need for carrots? Um, right, um, so we need a seed by preparator. There's two ways we can go now. We can either just look for it or we can filter for um, the um, crop we wanna implement. Um, so first the seed by preparator is like universal and I know where it is, so I just buy it. I'll put it here. A vegetable planter is here and don't get fooled by the tooltips they update once you hover over something and it's not the one you're selected okay so and now we need a carrot harvester um, we just look for the carrots here choose the carrot harvester and put it here harvest carrots and it's effective that's how we like it Perfect. Um, one thing you can do 
on this screen here is also like move around the things if you notice that you misplaced something you can like also rotate everything and make it nice and clean um, before we actually go into farming right now we first need um, to also set up some um, warehouses and silos to make sure we can harvest everything <laughs> like it doesn't make sense to harvest something and not have a place to store it so I'm gonna place this um, warehouse which is needed for cooled stuff um, because we want to harvest the carrots that are required to be cooled once you harvest them um, for other crops you would need to choose either a silo this is for everything which is grain related or a ventilated storehouse which is when for everything else basically uh, which does need to be refrigerated but you can also look in the down left um, there is like the overview of what crops can are fitting this year um, this storage type right so um, the next thing we need to do is hire a worker to be actually able to do some work um, here you need to make sure that um, you don't hire too much because they have monthly costs and you only have a set amount of money um, for the demo there are no loans in the demo so if you run out of money you're game over basically um, so you need to take care of that and also make sure to not hire too many and then let them off and hire again um, because every hire costs money like there's hiring costs now we have hired a worker uh, what are we doing and uh, we get to grow stuff finally it's time to get you with some field work um, we have our machines we have my our worker it's time for our first crop um, so first we need to select a field press buy and then we can actually plant something. So, Chad, what field do we want to buy? I will give you a selection. First one, we have field 871. We can uh, rename fields, so we will name it option one. Then, um, if you don't want to go so big, we can go to option two a bit smaller here and then um, let me see let's do this as option three I like this one let's buy the field let's go do you want to buy the field it would cost us 4,400 euros I think that's fine it's, it's a good price for a field <laughs> it has 2.2 hectares that's nice that's good we can work with that so Okay, this was too fast. Um, if you go to the field, there's like the plant button you can press to actually plant stuff. Um, normally, you could also, before buying a field, um, check the crop values here. Um, but you can also let Chat decide which, <laughs> which field to buy. It, uh, it doesn't make too much difference here. So, um. <laughs> right. Like, it makes a difference when when you really get into it, but for the tutorial, it's fine. Um, you should just make sure to not choose a too big field, so I'm very glad uh, we go went with the rather tiny um, field here. So, now this big screen. Um, amazing new big overloading screen. Don't be scared. <laughs> there's a lot of information on it. Um, and if you hover over everything, there's everything explained. Um, but just let's look at the very left this we have like a crop fit value wherever you press on the timeline um, if it doesn't bug out um, you can see what for this time would be the actual best crop fit from the starting date um, there is a cal calculation behind that basically sums up everything which is in behind these symbols here um so <laughs> right um we want to have a carrot and it's like five ninety five percent uh, here crop fit which is fine we can work with that i want to um 
have the cards because I also have all the vehicles for it. Um, we could also now start to analyze everything like which how is the soil moisture requirements for the crop. Um, so the carrier consumes 40% over the whole crop duration, so from April to June right now. Um, and the field currently contains 85% of water. So there's no problem. There's also why there's no sign that tells me there's a problem. So if there's a problem, a little sign here will tell you um, what needs to be done. So for example, if we would go with zucchini, we this we would see that the temperature starting in April is not exactly matching the temperature as zucchini needs to grow optimally as zucchini needs uh, needs really warm and yeah it's not warm in April in Germany <laughs> so yeah that's that and the carrot yeah doesn't need too much warmth so it's fine it's tolerable <laughs> to work with that so then we have um, the optional step of cultivating the field um, to reduce weed pressure. Um, but we don't have tools for it right now, so we're gonna skip this optional step. The same with plowing would also decrease weed pressure and weed population. But I don't have the tool right now. Yeah, we tried our best to make this in depth. Um, right, so. We're just now at the seedbed station, so we need to prepare the seedbed, um, obviously, um, to create the optimal require optimal conditions for seeding. Um, we also have already bought the implement, so we just can confirm it that we like that what we bought and then it's confirmed that we can use it. We could actually also choose manual work. We only have one worker, so it would be like really long um, to cultivate the whole field, like um, make sure that so we use the machine because this is way faster. Um, you also saw that the timeline um, adjusted. Also for seeding, obviously we need to go over the whole field. We also use the machine we already bought. And at the end of the season, we need to harvest everything. And this is the best also with a machine, even though a lot of um, crops we have require manual um, harvest because we don't have machines for every crop. Set. And then here in the end, we can see if everything's good and green, this is the perfect world. This is what we want to see. Um, if we would like adjust the timing also, we would actually see that the sun duration is not enough or the temperature wouldn't fit if we go into the winter. Um, we have chosen, or you chat, have chosen a beautiful field. We have perfect soil mo moisture and um, val field values like the nitrogen is a lot of there inside already, a lot of phosphorus and a lot of potassium. So we don't need to worry about basically anything here. So this is amazing. Also, we don't have any weed on the field. Um, very good choice. <laughs> um, also, you have a summary here on the right where it shows you the actual working per period. Um, you can also like adjust it by day if you want to. Um, this is important once we start to have multiple fields uh, because you don't want to match your one person. Like you can't split your person. You make sh you need to make sure that there's time to actually do the work for the people. You need to make sure that you look at the timing. And it's shown here. You also can see your current, current crop, select the crop. Also, you see how long the growing period is and that we what steps we're doing. So if you're also doing the optional steps, this will also be shown here and also how many workers you need for, are, or how many workers you assign to the step. And then there's like a summary how many days this will take. 93 days and then we will have carrots we have a yield prognosis here and it's probably that we will lose five percent of our harvest like of our most optimal way but it's very very seldom in real life that you would have like perfect conditions like we're really close to perfect conditions here and at the very bottom there's like the expected revenue so we, if everything goes right and we don't mess anything up and it, 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 it looks good, um, right. we will get 19,000 euros. 
which is great because we invested a lot of money. <laughs> okay, um, I'm loving the fact that this is a precision farming with HP balance, etc. of the soil. Yeah. It's, we put a lot of brain power into making sure to find good values here. Um, like which values are actually necessary, which values also farmers look at. Um, so what's the realistic, um, yeah, what, what values are relevant. And we also had Raphael who helped us with that. He's a farmer here in Germany, actually. And yeah, it was really valuable having his input there. And he's still working with us, making sure that n nothing is too broken. <laughs> um, yeah. What would you say is the most complicated aspect in Global Farmer? The most complicated one. Probably figuring these screens out. <laughs> Once you know what everything means, especially like this one, you're gonna be a pro. Like making sure um, you understand what these values mean, what these icons mean, and making sure that you understand what consequences you have when you're not making sure that your sunshine duration or temperature or other values doesn't line up. Um, so, for example, if we would um, go for carrots in June to September, there would be like um, four to eight hours of sunshine hours for the whole duration. But actually, the carrots would all only work well in July and August. In September, there's only like the four hours and we would lose all the harvests completely, basically, even though the game is kind of sneakily not showing you um, because the average calculation still looks fine. Um, so that's a complicated aspect um, you need to take, to take in mind. Um, will the prices change of the crop? you can sell at different times of the year um currently this is in the demo it's not in the in there um like the prices are always the same currently 